Welcome to HPE Discover 2023 in the wonderful city of Las Vegas. It is so great to see so many familiar faces, both from customers and partners who have been with us on this journey, as well as lots of new faces. So thank you for being with us today. We have a lot of great things planned, and I hope you walk away understanding how HPE and HPE GreenLake can help you on your IT transformation journey. My name is Alexia Clements, and I lead the worldwide go-to-market for HPE Cloud Services. I thought I'd start off with a little story. I have a 12-year-old daughter. She's going on 13. This, she'll be 13 later this summer. And she just got her first cell phone. And as being under 13, I have to approve all her apps that she gets, that she gets to download. And she keeps bugging me and bugging me to download this app where you basically take pictures of receipts and you get free gift cards from it. And she wants all these gift cards. I'm like, what are you gonna do with all these gift cards? She's like, mom, there's gift cards for Sephora and Lululemon and Target. I need those. And so I did a little research on this app and I was trying to figure out what are they doing with this? And so basically I explained to her, hey honey, they want our shopping habits. They wanna see what we're buying. They're taking our data and doing something with it. And they're pulling insights out of it. And data is the new currency that every business wants. And she looks at me, no joke, and she rolls her eyes and it's like, mom, I just wanna buy some new leggings. This isn't that big of a deal. But this is the, this is the world we're living in and how critical data is. So, um, it's my pleasure to be with you here today to talk about HPE GreenLake, how it can help you realize your hybrid strategy. And I'm super excited to have our esteemed guests with us on stage to share their insights from an industry perspective and business perspective, and really to showcase how they are leveraging HPE GreenLake to achieve their IT transformation goals. So let's dive in. So in my role, I am fortunate to speak to many customers regularly. And each customer comes with their own unique requirements. But they do have some common concerns when considering their hybrid strategy. And they want to know, how can I protect and leverage their data to unlock the value for insights? What they, where they need it, and when they need it. So my daughter is right there with them. <laughs> How can they modernize their multi-gen IT and reach their sustainability goals? And how can they increase flexibility to deploy workloads and data where it makes sense, based on how their business is operating and how it'll operate in the future? And how can they connect their IT silos across a distributed enterprise with new experiences at the edge and connecting legacy applications with new edge solutions at scale and with agility based on ever-changing customer demands. Do these questions sound familiar to many of you? But to be among the leaders in advanced technologies, companies need to capitalize on the mega trends we are seeing in the market around edge, hybrid cloud, and AI. Edge is where connectivity and security converge and where we're seeing a rapid increase of new sources and volumes of data that enterprises need to extract that value out of and insights out of. And being able to connect the data from the edge all the way back to their cloud in a secure manner. And hybrid cloud is all about new architectures and multi-cloud, hybrid cloud strategies that are the next evolution of multi-generational IT environments. And for AI, nearly all organizations have an ever-growing mountain of data assets and they need to get their arms around their data estate to deliver new insights, to make faster business decisions. 
And we see that data remains spread across silos. And the data lifecycle management is increasing in complexity. And AI offers the means to analyze assets at scale and is really becoming a cornerstone in digital transformation process. Enterprises can gain an edge if they unlock the power of data with the right operating model in a secure and compliant way. And I would just say security is, of course, top of mind and needed everywhere data resides, especially to protect against some of today's most sophisticated cybersecurity attacks. We know the world is hybrid. Cloud is an operating model that customers increasingly expect to have wherever their workloads live, and whether that be in the public cloud, in data centers, or in colos. And the result is a growing demand for hybrid cloud experiences. And we want to make sure that we connect them all together and give customers the ability to increase their data across their entire estate. So you're probably asking yourself, how can I modernize my IT operations and give my business the time to value it needs to compete effectively in the marketplace? Well, you're at the right place. The HPE GreenLake Edge to Cloud platform can help you. HPE GreenLake is the cloud that comes to you. With HPE GreenLake, we deliver a portfolio of cloud and as a service offers built on HPE technology. And in conjunction with our strong partner ecosystem, we can deliver fully integrated solutions that matter most to you. Our portfolio is offered through our secure HPE GreenLake platform to help you address your challenges at the edge, to your core, and inclusive of the public cloud. With HPE GreenLake, we bring the cloud operating model where you need it, based on where your apps and data live, and inclusive of what has moved to the multiple public clouds in your environment. And this comes with all the cloud attributes and cloud economics you are expecting. Pay-as-you-go consumption, elasticity to scale up and down, and self-service capabilities with everything managed for you and or with you based on your specific needs. So with HP GreenLake, we can help you design your hybrid cloud purposefully to get the best out of your data and improve your IT operations. With our industry and technology expertise, we can deliver a secure strategy for your hybrid multi-cloud needs. And our goal is to meet you where you're at on your journey with a clear path forward towards your hybrid cloud strategy that integrates all your edges and your core as part of your hybrid cloud to optimize every workload unify all your data needs across all your silos and deliver an agile cloud experience everywhere. So our experts, along with our partner ecosystem, can engage with you up front to identify your hybrid cloud strategy, to identify your requirements, design the right solution for you, and then help you implement the solution to meet your specific needs. Together, we can validate your requirements, define your roadmap, and get you the right help you need to create new IT and business services ready for your consumption that meet your business and transformation goals. So let's now hear from our guests. First, I am very excited to invite David Lithicum on stage. David is a Chief Cloud Strategy Officer at Deloitte. He is a true thought leader in cloud computing, AI, cybersecurity, and he is going to give us an industry perspective and share his market insights. Please help me welcome David to the stage. Howdy. Thank you for being here. My pleasure. Okay, thank you. We've got a Get great going. crowd here. Let's do it. 
Okay, so in your role as Chief Cloud Strategy Officer at Deloitte, you meet with lots of customers day in, day out, and really talk to them about how they're evolving their cloud strategy. What are you seeing as some of the primary trends today? Yeah, the big trend that I'm seeing is things that are moving into more of a complex digital, digital uh, strategy. So in other words, we, we've kind of worked in public cloud, we're gonna centralize lots of things and moving information as quickly as we could to the public cloud. Now the growth of edge computing, the growth of multi-cloud, people trying to enable their existing legacy systems. We're trying to leverage the processes and the data where it exists. In other words, we're not forcing people to take all their stuff and put it on this platform uh, because it's cool to do that with the promise of any kind of some sort of cost savings. We're looking at the platform that's most optimized for the applications and the data. And what we're doing is we're hosting the stuff there, which is kind of a unique concept. So we're not just evaluating the platform on the platform's sake, we're looking at the terms of the application, the terms of the data. In other words, what their requirements are, and then ultimately doing this thing where we're trying to find the platforms that are more fully optimized. And guess what? That's sometimes it's gonna be edge computing, sometimes it's gonna be on my phone, sometimes it's gonna be on my watch. Yep. And any number of places. So your ability to get at those systems and your ability to provide centralized command and control is something that's an imperative now. And that's what people are looking at. I would say we're, we're trying to build a connective tissue to hook all these things together, to find common processes, to build orchestration and abstraction and automation layers, to basically build very sophisticated systems over very complex distributed infrastructure, but it's fairly simple to operate. That's where we're moving right now. No, that's insightful. And are there certain industries that are doing a better job at that that you've seen in talking to clients? Yeah, one of the things we found out in a, a survey that we did at Deloitte last year, that it really kind of mattered not how much money was being spent yeah. in terms of people's success. And so what I did is I looked for people who were in companies that were being very successful with using digital transformation technology, specifically the cloud, and then looked at what their, uh, their path was and what industries that are, that are in. Primarily, it's going to be uh, the finance groups, it's going to be the banks, insurance companies, things like that, that are putting more time and energy and more innovative thought in how you're building these systems. And the reason they're doing that is fairly simple. Their industry is changing. Use of crypto, the ability to, to underwrite loans in a different way, the ability to, to deal with uh, economic downturns in some way that's not going to affect the core business, mm -hmm. the ability to kind of automate how they deal with their customers in a very sophisticated way, the ability to leverage AI as a true force multiplier in their business. And they seem to be doing the best in terms of industries right now. A close second would be healthcare they're okay. moving up. And then also you're st you still see re retail trying to get up to the third position. Got it. And are there any best practices that you've identified in, you know, whether it be in some of those industries or in talking to some of your other clients? The big best practice is fairly simple. It's a matter of planning. And what we did during the pandemic was we seemed to have tossed planning out the window in many instances. We were trying to move applications and data as quickly from one platform to another. Sometimes they viewed you know, the cloud computing as a safe harbor, moving in back to on-premise systems, things like that. But the amount of strategic planning and vision that needs to be created around doing that successful, uh, successfully needs to exist first. So the first and foremost thing when I go and talk to a client and uh, looking at their ambitions to do their digital transformation technology and prove things, you know, to get to a much more better, more innovative state. I was talking about the plan and vision. Where are you looking to go? Not only just a year out, which we have a tendency just to look out in publicly traded companies in the United States, but three years out and five years out and 10 years out. What do you plan on being when you grow up? How are you gonna weaponize and leverage technology as a true force multiplier to bring it into your business? And how are we gonna build the platforms in an optimized way where we're not throwing money out the window in terms of lack of efficiency and leveraging this technology? That by far is the most important thing you can be doing right now. And you mentioned the costs and things like that. So given the current like economic client, climate that we're all in and keeping a close eye on costs is a really a top priority for you know, many enterprises, what approach are you seeing that's working well? It's a great question. I always tell people with enough money and time, we can solve any problems. But guess what? We don't have enough money and time. So the reality, we saw this in 2022, survey after survey came back where people were not getting their ROI from their cloud deployments and even technological deployments that they thought they would get. In many instances, it was costing them 2.5 times the amount of cost 
to deploy the, deploy the platforms that they thought they were when they first started their journey. And in many instances, those are self-inflicted wounds. They're not looking at the optimization curve and not doing the planning for some of the things that we had. But we're implementing, number one, visibility into what these costs are. In other words, who's using what for what purpose and when, not only on the cloud, but on premise. Even though we pay for the cloud in a utility-based model, we still pay for on-premise systems in very, very similar kinds of ways, just different ways in which we're investing. And the ability to put accountability and the ability to put governance and the ability to understand where everything is going. I quite frankly had customers that would call me up that would have a $100,000 cloud bill and had no idea where it went. In other words, they don't know who spent it for what purpose. And when you look at it, they were leaving things provisioned and weren't turning down things. So it's very simple things to get ahead of it. So that's why they have the rise of FinOps, which is a collection of technologies, but it's also a behavior, it's also a culture, a way of doing something. The ability to kind of change your operating models about building systems, they're gonna become just as cost efficient as they can be to return the most value back to the business. So it is a value-based model, we're driving value by optimizing the various systems, and we're pulling things back in many instances where we're overspending. And by the way, we're getting to a better state of efficiency in doing that. We're not limiting innovation, we're not telling people you can't use this technology, because in Guys of a multi-cloud world, we're going to use whatever best of breed technology we need to leverage. What we're telling them, when you leverage this technology, you have to do so in such a way where we're going to maximize efficiency and your ability to approve the metrics. And by the way, automate those metrics in a certain way where it's going to be understandable by not only the people who are operating the system, but the administrators as well as to what value is coming back from the business based on the dollars that are being spent. I love that. Um, I mean, that, in the uh, customer conversations that I'm having, FinOps is vet definitely something that more and more customers are, are looking at and, and trying to put that in place. You know, another thing that we talk a lot about with um, our customers and a big concern is around security. What are you, how are you approaching security and data privacy with your clients? Yes, that's a big thing. Um, reality is, a few years ago, and, and somewhat today, we're still looking at security as something we can bolt onto the existing systems to make it work. It's systemic to everything you do. It's built into the architecture. It's built in the way you develop the systems. The reason we have DevSecOps is the ability to kind of build into the way in which we're building applications. So it should be thought of in terms of what the patterns of behaviors are within a particular application, what patterns of data are we protecting, and adjusting security for those particular workloads in whatever configurable way we're going to make it happen. So we put volatility in looking at these vast amounts of things into a configurable domain where we can define security for our finance applications, define security for inventory applications or customer-based applications in different ways using the identity of those applications to make it work. And if we're not doing that, we're not engineering security into every step of the way, we're gonna end up failing. So this is not something where we bring in a team at the last minute to you know, bolt security onto various systems. This is about an architecture that has to go into how you're gonna build these systems moving forward. It can't go any other way. Back to planning. Back to planning. Yep, so a lot of people are comparing the current hype around AI to where we were with cloud 10 years ago. So AI is the new buzzword that everyone's talking about. What role do you see cloud playing in helping enterprises to adopt AI? It's ultimately it's gonna be everything to what AI is because that's where the, plat that's where the AI platforms are on. You gotta remember AI is not new. It was invented in the 50s as a concept. And I worked on, I'm 61, I worked on AI systems my first job out of college. It was five years ago, okay? And uh, I had a long senior year. Um, <laughs> but the, the reality is that AI is going to run on the platforms that sh they should be most efficient. In many instances, that's going to be on-premise, but more often than not, it's going to be on public cloud-based platforms, because if you're looking at the stuff, chat, GTP, and all the other things we're leveraging these days, that's where it's hosted. So in other words, people who are building this stuff, they're making a hosting decision to put it on a particular cloud platform because they view that as having the elasticity, the utility, and the ability to scale. So you really can't separate AI and cloud computing. So the better AI platforms are going to run in the particular public cloud providers, what public cloud provider you, you're going to leverage is really going to be dependent on the AI platform you're looking to leverage. So people, that's why you have a multi-cloud world right now. And not necessarily because they plan to move to multi-cloud, but they view different AI technologies as providing best of, breed to, uh, best of breed for their particular application, and they leverage whatever cloud provider was hosting those AI technologies. And so, in essence, the best of breed technology for the applications is driving the consumption of AI. 
Clouds are typically going to be the horsepower behind it to make it happen. And so all things just kind of come into play. We still have to do planning, you still have to do security, you still have to do everything you need to make those things work. And it's an exciting time. My big concern now is people are going to make those kind of mistakes. Do you see other technologies that are going to impact your clients' cloud strategies? Yeah, I think, you know, ultimately it's the ability to build up to this abstract, abstraction automation layer. People are calling this super cloud, meta cloud. It's kind of a hypey thing. But the reality is we're looking to build a logical layer of technology on top of the existing hardware on-premise platforms, Green Lake, for example, and various cloud providers, and then having the ability to abstract those things into this logical domain. So we, we stop dealing with complexity on the terms of complexity. So in other words, we're not, we're not uh, you know, uh, dealing with different databases in a heterogeneous environment using whatever skills that we can find for those particular databases. In other words, we're looking at the ability to put, again, complexity and volatility into a single domain, provide centralized command and control to these various systems, abstract the way in which we're operating these systems. In other words, we're removing some of the operation of complexity and doing so in such a way where it's going to take less people, less money, less time, and then we finally get the value coming back from this stuff. So we made the investments. We're not going to change the investments. We just need to do a better job the command and control and the connective tissue in making these things work. That's wonderful. So as we wrap up, and um, last question, are there, and especially our audience may have some, you know, as they're thinking about where they're at on their journey and, and what, um, are there any gotchas that they need to be wary of or things that they should, you know, think about um, as they're on this journey? Yeah, that's blindly moving to particular hype technology without an insight in terms of the efficiency and value that's going to be able to brought back to the business. The biggest danger right now is AI, not that AI is not great technology. I've been dealing with it for lots of particular times, for a long time. It solves particular problems extremely well. However, the over-application of the technology and therefore creating applications that are innately in inefficient, in other words, they're burning more CPUs and using more storage than they should, is really what the gotcha is right now. So in other words, looking at what the applications and the business requirements are, then looking at the platforms that are going to provide the most efficiency to run those platforms, and then looking at the reasonableness of leveraging whatever technology to make it happen. So I, I don't mean I'm a technologist, I get excited about this stuff, I write about this stuff, I speak about this stuff. But the reality is this is about us solving problems for business. IT is there to en enable business value within the organization. So as long as we kind of keep an eye on that and adjust our, our spending and our technical decisions, we're going to avoid those gotchas. That's terrific. Um, thank you so much for your insights, David. I have to tell you, David's got a bunch of different books. You can check it out. Um, I actually just purchased one, An Insider's Guide to Cloud Computing. It had great insights as well as a call to action in each chapter that I absolutely loved. So thank you for being with us today. I appreciate it. It's my pleasure. Me thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers. So I mentioned earlier, we can help companies with their hybrid cloud and modernization efforts. And I'm very excited to have three of our esteemed customers here with me today to join us to share their insights into their business challenges and how HPE GreenLake has really been a building block for their hybrid cloud strategy. So please join me in welcoming Matt Messick, CIO of the Dallas Cowboys, Pat Furr, Assistant Vice President of Texas Children's Hospital, and Cody Townsend, IT Director at Experian. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank you for being here. Okay. <laughs> Terrific. So thank you for being here today. So why don't we start off, and why don't you tell us about your business, the key challenges that you've been facing as part of your digital transformation journey. Why don't you start, Matt? All right, I'll go ahead. Um, all right, so Dallas Cowboys, everybody just thinks Dallas Cowboys. Yes, and, and you're in colors, you're like, you, you're doing the brand. That wasn't planned. <laughs> <laughs> the strict dress code. There you go. Colors, you know. <laughs> uh, no, uh, look, like I said, big brand. Um, that's what everybody talks about, that's what everybody thinks, but to be honest, that's not why I'm here today. And um, what, you know, what we do is much more than football. So a lot of people don't realize all the different businesses, the different entities, things that we're involved in. You know, we have uh, 
merchandising, large merchandising, apparel businesses, energy businesses, construction businesses, um, co-working space, esports. Um, it just comes at you from all different directions. Um, so that kind of leads into, you know, um, you know, your next question is like, what is your, what are your struggles? Yeah. You know? And that's, that's meeting the demand of growth. Got it. Right. I mean, that's, um, you know, that that is forefront for me. It's uh, the culture of the team and and uh, being able being in a position where we can provide and be there, uh, enable the business. And that's, uh, that is a struggle. Yeah. You know? and, Especially and, fast paced and having so many of those different businesses. Yeah, I mean, look, it goes back to the Dallas Cowboys is a worldwide brand, but at the end of the day, we're a family run uh, mid-sized enterprise. So it's uh, a lot of people don't look at it that yeah. way, but that's how I feel every day. <laughs> yeah, a lot coming at you. How about you, Pat? Uh, yeah, uh, so just kind of give you a little bit of background of, of uh, Texas Children's. Uh, you know, we're the uh, largest women's and uh, children's uh, healthcare system in the U.S. Uh, we have a, a deep reach into uh, patients across uh, the entire U.S. Uh, we're 70 countries globally, uh, so we're ex uh, extremely proud of that. Um, uh, U.S. News reports uh, ranked us as the uh, number two best uh, children's hospital. Uh, last year, uh, but we are not done yet. Congratulations. We are, we are aimed for number one. <laughs> um, and we're, uh, uh, so we're headqu I'm headquartered in, in uh, Houston uh, in the Med Center, and uh, the, the uh, Texas Med Center is the largest healthcare complex uh, in the world. And uh, you know, that's where they do uh, 10, 10 million patient encounters uh, per year. Oh. Of that 10 million, Texas Children's does 4.3 million wow. patient counters per year. So um, I say all that because that 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 really reinforces our mission of uh, providing the best care to uh, the women and the children that we serve uh, in our global community and being the leaders in uh, patient care, uh, education, and also research. Now, all that. All that um, uh, is is the focus of the uh, technology that we build to uh, support that uh, day in and day out. So um, uh, HPE has has uh, been with us along our digital uh, uh, transformation journey, where we uh, consolidated uh, 11 data centers down into two. Uh, we built out our uh, Azure um, uh, tenant environment. Uh, 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 brought in uh, the majority of our SaaS uh, applications uh, you know, into a, a, a federated model, and then uh, most recently the, the rollout of our uh, HPE GreenLake uh, for our uh, private cloud. So uh, we have all the building blocks now to uh, be able to um, uh, put the workloads in the in the right spot. Terrific. How about you, Cody? Yeah. So I'll tell you a little bit about Experian. I think we're you know we're a global company. I th uh, most people probably think of us as consumer credit. We have a lot of other businesses that we're in. Um, so you know, we talked about the finance side, and we're there. And then we also have a, a big health organization, as well as you know, automotive and many other business units and sub-business units with different interests and different uh, uh, objectives, if you will. Um, some of our biggest challenges, I would say, are, are technology debt. We have a lot of you know, legacy gear in our data centers that we try to maintain, and it takes a lot of time and a lot of energy from a lot of people to keep all that up and running and healthy. And uh, so, <clears throat> between that and and just the, uh, the the more traditional practices, I guess mm -hmm. you would call it, in, in procurement and in the different areas like that, uh, I think those are the, the the challenges that we're trying to overcome with our GreenLake solution. Perfect. Let's, let's shift a little bit and, and talk a little bit about why you selected HP GreenLake for your hybrid cloud. And, you know, Matt, you mentioned 150 businesses in the Jerry Jones family of companies. That's a lot. Um, what was that aha moment for you and your organization where you realized the hybrid model was really the best solution for your business? Well, I mean, you're, you're talking a handful of years of, of things coming at you. You know, from different directions. I mean, that that aha moment is when you reach the point of, you know, we we my, and I say we, my team, we cannot we cannot continue to meet those last second demands. Mm -hmm. I mean, like uh, my organization, they don't 
they don't, I'd say at the top with the ownership and the executive team from a technology standpoint, um, and, and this is probably from the, the sports side of the world, they don't, yeah. they don't understand technology as much, they don't necessarily want to. Right. So when, when we're asked to jump, the, the word no doesn't right. quite you know, work. Just make it happen. Yeah, just make it happen. So the aha moment is, is built up over time, over time to realize like our, our current operating model um, is not working, yeah. period. And, um, and, and when that aha moment happened, uh, didn't really know what quite, you know, which direction to go. Um, you know, I can remember, I can remember almost the day um, when I saw my very first PowerPoint presentation on GreenLake, you know, and sitting back and saying, wow, um, this is it, this is our path, you know, and it, look, and it's not something that we jumped on mm -hmm. instantly. I'm sure you can talk to our account team. It, yeah. it took us a good, <laughs> us a good year to, um, to get to the point to where we were ready to go. It was nervous, right? Yeah. I mean, it was so new, um, and a lot, of, a lot of things changed from, you know, capital expenditures to operating expenses. There was a lot, there was a lot at play. So, and then me selling that to the organization, um, at the same time, I knew it was gonna be the best thing for my team, you know, so. <laughs> It was, a, it was a great aha moment, and that, you know now here we are. Um, you know, we'll talk about it later, but there's there's a lot of stuff that's continue great stuff that's happening every single day. You okay. know, but um, yeah. Wonderful. How about you, Pat? Why did you choose to leverage HP GreenLake for your private cloud? Uh, well, uh, some of the uh, similar things as uh, Matt. So just the the uh, flexibility of of the uh, cloud uh, technologies, um, the uh, agility and then the financial structure. Uh, so the the um, taking advantage of those, those uh, cloud uh, technologies. You know we um, you know we are a highly regulated um, uh, industry, and uh, so we uh, take a lot of care and a passion in ensuring that our data is is uh, protected. And so you know there's you know many of our systems we just don't feel comfortable with putting them into the, the uh, public cloud, and uh, so private cloud uh, made more sense for us. Uh, from the, uh, the agility uh, perspective, uh, we are a very fast-paced um, organization, and so we have to uh, respond very, very quickly. And the uh, financial structure, uh, the, you know, s some companies are, uh, prefer capital, uh, some prefer uh, OPEX, and uh, we were in, in a position where um, you know, we had more uh, capital asked than capital funding available, and so the GreenLake option just uh, made economic sense for us at that Perfect. time, too. Perfect. How about you, Cody? You're right in the process of building out your um, private cloud model for Experian. How did HPE GreenLake really fit into that hybrid cloud strategy? Yeah, I, I would say much like Matt and, and company, the um, the current model wasn't working, right? We're kind of in the way of the business. So uh, to get out of the way of the business, we, we needed to look more like the public clouds. The public clouds provide the, you know, everything that the business wants, the, the agility and, and able to move fast and fail fast and, and continue on. Um, the GreenLake private cloud for me was the right answer because we could do all of that. We, we could present it in a way that it looks like a public cloud. We could use the same tool sets that we use in the public cloud. And so <clears throat> basically, it's on-prem. It cures a, a lot of the, the delays we have in the traditional procurement process that I mentioned, um, you know, building business cases and getting approvals and ordering hardware and waiting for that hardware. We have all this on-site. We, we have capacity on demand on-site. We have that OPEX model with uh, the showback that we can go to and, and just like you can in a public cloud. So that to me was, was all very key and we, we looked at a lot of different solutions and, and we thought that this ticked all the boxes for us. Perfect. Well, I'm just hitting on like and what you guys were up here talking about earlier about like how critical planning is. Yes. And, and from uh, just listening to us talk, you know, uh, it's, it's tough when you're buying all of your infrastructure and trying to plan you know, three to four to five years ahead of time. You don't have the crystal ball there. <laughs> well, I mean, in, in, in our world, it doesn't, I mean, it's, and I'm sure in most, yeah. you know, but it really helps out there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we often hear that data is the lifeblood of organizations. And so, Pat, you mentioned that having that hybrid cloud model was essential for your business, but mm -hmm. also how has HP GreenLake helped you from a data perspective 
in your data strategy and what you're doing with patient care and, and have you seen improved performance? Uh, absolutely, uh, great, a great question. So uh, yeah, the, the, the standardization of the uh, compute uh, and storage uh, was key uh, for us within the uh, GreenLake model. Um, you know, from a uh, performance perspective, uh, you know, almost critical a system, uh, Epic, uh, where the employee, uh, where the patient records are, um, you know, we saw like a, a, a 28% uh, increase in um, uh, clinical and user performance, and uh, so that was huge uh, because that that directly um, shows you how the advancement of technology directly has an impact on patient mm -hmm. care uh, and experience, and. Um, uh, yeah, it's it's uh, been. I mean, I can I can touch on a little bit uh, too with the uh, migration uh, that we did. So, um, you know, it was a, a six-month uh, migration. Um, uh, we moved uh, thousands of, of systems over. Uh, I'll say about sixty percent of the migrations that we did, uh, we had zero downtime, and uh, the the balance of that forty percent was. Most of that was less than five minutes, mm -hmm. you know, and up to like an hour and a half, but those were much more complex systems that we had to kind of walk through that process. But again, you know, whenever we take those te uh, technical maintenance windows, our clinical staff have to revert to downtime procedures. Right. And, and so for us to migrate with minimal downtime, that was huge. And again, it, it, it trickles all the way down to the improved patient experience. Yeah, you can really, in your business, you really, that's those downtimes, and it's impactful to your patient care and to the women and children that, um, that are your customers, and yes. so um, that's important. So, Cody, you are in a highly regulated industry like Pat as well, and can you share how your stra hybrid strategy is really supporting your business units when it comes to data? and how you're looking at it from a governance, compliance perspective as well. I think everybody, when they think of Experian, thinks about their credit scores and... Yeah, yeah, very important information, right? Yeah. <laughs> In a lot of different ways, so, yeah, there's, you know, we have, we have data that, that comes from the federal level, the states, the local governments, a lot of different rules and regulations around different bits of information that we store and, and, and work with. Uh, having that on-prem, Colu adjacent or cloud adjacent Colu approach, which is what we're, we're doing with our private cloud, gives us a, an opportunity to in a landing zone for a lot of that data that that has those restrictions and the high bar. Mm -hmm. Really, all data has a high bar to, to meet as far as security and, and compliance goes. But having that on-prem opportunity and, and landing spot for our business units and, and their applications to where they can potentially run their apps in the public cloud and have the data sets on-prem or, or run everything on-prem, but giving them that that option it was key and was a big part of, of what we were trying to accomplish. And then also making sure that that data, when not just being on-prem, but making sure it's secure when it's on-prem. So all the all the guardrails around that, and, and we can do that with, the, with our private cloud solution, um, the encryption, um, the, the different, the firewalls, the, you know, all the different components that go into making up that security. Thank you for that. So, Matt, um, you know, we've been talking about data, and data's, you know, data's everywhere, and so much about, like, when you're, like, with what you're doing with the Dallas Cowboys and with your team, you know, how does your team really look at the data that they're getting from, like, maybe the video team, or how do you support your coaches and your players, you know, from that perspective, and whether that be difference from, like, game day and training and getting people ready, your players ready for, uh, to win? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, look, it's that's a great question, and I'll you know pull back the curtains a little bit on professional sports and some you know it's not they're not all the same, not yeah. every team, but um, you know look, there's there's still a lot of uh, different silos that 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 we're trying to break down and break through, um, and and the difference between coaching and like they're they might be a little late to the game on the adopting technologies, and and you have to win and win their trust over and. Uh, and I've got a great story just around when I came in, um, we were, you know, the, the football organization, they had their own infrastructure for all their video. And they just, they didn't want to touch the IT team. Yeah. You know, it's like, we, we got it. Hands we'll do off. It hands off. 
Um, you know, and like over the years, we just had lots of small wins, partnering with HPE, convincing them to move away from this unbranded commodity hardware that's dirt cheap, it fails all the time, and, and like let us bring that into the fold. We have the expertise, you know, we have the backing, we have great partners, and, uh, and that's exactly what we did. Um, and so, you know, we just kept getting win and win. And, and what was the, the, the lifeblood, uh, you know, data is the lifeblood. Yep. Well, when you talk about professional sports, video, Video is the lifeblood. I mean, they're, and I can just go on and on and on about how like this, this, these systems are critical. Yeah. I mean, these coaches, you know, they'll 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 fly back from a West Coast game. They'll get it for get home at 4 a.m. and they'll go straight to the office and start scrubbing video from yeah. the game from prior, studying for next week. It just it never ends. And so, you know, we've uh, we we're ju we're in the process right now. Because we had them, on, we had we'd migrated them to their own three-part, you know, standalone infrastructure. Now we're bringing them into the Green Lake platform as we okay. speak. So we're actually we're hoping to, you know, I don't know if you most people realize training camp is about to start with the, you know a little little over a month. Yeah. So we've got to get everything in, uh, get it up and running, and so when they come back from training camp, they have, um, you know, the latest and greatest. But it's uh, it, it absolutely is. I mean, video was king for us, mm -hmm. and um, and then just. Uh, this week or last week, we're breaking down another silo when it talks about video on our creative side, on our production side, our in-house, our you know our all of the TV shows that we create, and, you know just everything the in-game entertainment um, that was in its own separate silo, you know. And yeah. uh, those are really good like examples that we just talked about from the data silos. Uh, it's you know look and then and it was the same thing as like it was living in a little world. And last year they you know. They have they had somewhat complex systems that were failing on a regular basis because my team wasn't you know we're there we have experts in the yeah. building, and you know they had a they had a major uh, drive array failure lost tons of um, that was look the good th the bad things spawn good things yeah. you know and so like that finally got their attention I said let's do this so we're we're we just finalized our our new infrastructure uh, with Green Lake and we're folding all that in. Um, that will probably take a little time, but hopefully by the time uh, the season starts or early on. But like to the what we were talking about earlier, as far as being able to execute migrations, you know, when we migrated, you know, to to Green Lake, I mean, yeah, I I love the fact that nobody knew that it was actually happening. Mm -hmm. You know, in years past, it was don't touch anything during football season. Right. Period. Now it just we we can't slow down. That's you know, great. And, and it worked great. You um. Those are some really good examples about security and data silos, and let's talk a little bit about just the complexities that everybody's facing from a day-to-day -day management of your environment. So you kind of talked a little bit about how GreenLake was, is helping you um, with your IT operating model. Pat, maybe you can share just like how that's helping you from your, you know, the complexities of how you're managing your environment and, and the day-to-day -day operations and what you're seeing. Yeah, I mean, um, I'll say the the uh, advantages of, of a GreenLake is uh, with the managed services is that it's it's allowed um, uh, our resources to to uh, focus on higher value things, uh, strategy, innovation, uh, projects. Um, you know, but that was a, a conscious decision that we made. I mean, other companies, and you know, it might be built into the business case in yeah. order to do managed services need to reduce staff, but uh, you know the the pace pace and the demand of the work that we had just uh, we really needed to free up those resources to uh, do bigger and better things to focus to focus your teams to do those bigger better things yep. Cody, how are you seeing like a simplification of your hybrid operating model, and really how does maybe automation or self service or you know how do you enable your other businesses that you mentioned yeah so to, to build on what Pat was talking about it's very similar it's you know <clears throat> we have this this private cloud that has all the components it has the compute the storage the network uh, we have the automation built on top of that the infrastructure as code concept is built into that we can plumb this private cloud up to our corporate network much in the same way that we would plumb a public cloud up to it. So, and then you add on the GreenLake managed services, the additional capacity that's sitting there ready for you. My teams aren't doing that, that you know, technology debt maintenance 
you know, that we, that we spend so much time on now in our data centers. So we have the, the HP team behind us that's taking care of all of the things that our business doesn't necessarily see and isn't high priority for them, even though it's, it's an important activity that needs to get done. And then it takes, you know, gives our team, you know, much in the same way that, that ability to, to work on those infrastructure as code components and help integrate those, those tools that they use in the public cloud and integrate those with the, with the private cloud and, and make it seamless for our, our business units and help them move fast and quick. And, and then uh, <clears throat> it's really, I think that's it. You know, then, you know, the, un, the unexpected ask, you know, that, that uh, Matt talked about, we have, we have capacity sitting there. We're ready to use it, and we can expand into that. And then, if we decide we, we don't need it anymore, we can we can shrink back. So, it's a lot of a lot of different facets to it. It's not just one thing. There's it's the whole story, all the different facets, pieces of the puzzle that come together that make it a, a true solution for us. I'd love to just add one little yeah. thing, and it's it's just a little example. You know, like like I said, we, you know, we have a small team supporting uh, you know our green like infrastructure and. Um, uh, you know, this is just recent, the last month or so, is we had uh, one of our senior system admins uh, leave the organization. You know, and, and we've, we've had GreenLake in, you know, we've, we've shifted our operating model. Um, and as soon as uh, this individual left, you know, we you know, grabbed, gathered the director and the manager and the whole, the, the entire team that's supporting. And I said, let's, let's talk about, you know, backfilling this position. And it was unanimous that we didn't need to target a senior level yeah. person at this point. You know, let's let's shift that compensation over to a different part of uh, you know. I'm not letting it go outside yeah, of IT, but exactly. <laughs> you know, like it was it was a great example because that's what we thought it was going to do, and it was actually doing that. And so then it um, it was just a great little. I, I wanted to add that because no, it's, it's a good. great example. It's good because it's taken some of the day to day operations that were that are that are facing organizations yeah. and letting your team focus on maybe some of the more strategic areas. You know, as Pat mentioned, and Cody, and um, and letting you target that for and, le and letting HPE handle a certain port portion yeah. of those day to day. So, as you look to what's next in your business or projects, what are you seeing that you know how HPE can help you in you know continuing to move forward? Pat, I'm not sure if you want to take that. Uh, part. Sure. Um, uh, AI, AI, AI. AI, uh, AI, AI. That is that is the buzzword. Uh, uh, our physicians, our researchers, uh, they're just, uh, you know, we, with being uh, uh, the largest children's and women's uh, healthcare, we have a lot of data. And as, as was mentioned earlier, you know, the data, data is that new currency, right? And so, um, you know, we're um, working through the installation of our research uh, uh, system right now, uh, um, you know, in, to be able to, to better, better leverage that data uh, so that we can diagnose um, a condition with the patients faster mm -hmm. uh, or faster recovery times or a simple, we can uh, prevent uh, certain, uh, certain conditions from even occurring uh, to begin with. That's great. How about you, Cody? So you mentioned HPE GreenLake is your new uh, standard for Experian. What are you hoping to achieve with that, you know, new, you know, private cloud that you're doing, as you mentioned, in a colo? Yeah, I, I think it's taken us to the next level again. Going back to that that traditional model of um, the infrastructure and the data center, and, and and creating that HA and resiliency on the back end, where we're we're doing replication between storage arrays, or we're 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 taking care of all that in the background. So moving that into the to the new model, the more like the public cloud, where it's the application teams that they can deploy into different regions, right, in the public clouds. And so this gives us the ability to stand up these private clouds in, in different parts of the, different regions as well, whether it's in different parts of the country in the U.S. or whether it's globally. And so then the app teams have that same opportunity to create their own resiliency and also, you know, that kind of get closer to their customers as well, right? Wherever, wherever their customers may be, if they're spread out, then it may not matter as much, but if they have a certain part of the country or different time zones that, that are important to them, they can deploy to those time zones and those parts of the country as well. So that's, that's the goal. Um, we're, not, we're not there yet, but that's, the, that's where we're, we're headed. That's the future for you. Yeah. What about you, Matt? 
Um, you know, I, I kind of leaked out a couple things. We're definitely working close on some new major initiatives. Great. Like I said, like with all the video on, on both sides, um, that, that has to be perfect. Just going to tell you right now, can't, can't mess up there. <laughs> no pressure. Um, yeah, no, but I mean, look, it's it's with everything that that we're all, that we're all talking about. I mean, and even here at Discover, I mean, it's one of the things that I love about Discover the most is, is like I don't think people realize how many experts are here. Yeah. You know, that are working a booth that are these are engineers that you can walk up, and so like, it's it's getting help with, um, you know, with, with with the AI and with I mean, we're doing a lot of also network segmentation of breaking up some of these businesses that we originally were like, hey, we're just going to all live underneath the one. Yep. Now we're we're leveraging the latest technology to provide true segmentation. So that's that's the next big one coming for Perfect. us. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. So thank you very much for sharing your insights and experiences. I really appreciate the open conversation and and learning about what you're all doing in your organizations and I think you've given our audience a lot to think about. I hope you've enjoyed the session. I really want to thank you for coming today to learn about how HPE GreenLake can help you on your transformation and hybrid strategy goals. As we talked about earlier, HPE GreenLake brings the modern cloud experience to where your apps and data live. And together with our strong partner ecosystem, we really fully enable those integrated solutions to help you meet your business challenges and really accelerate the outcomes that you're driving. So this week, there are a lot of exciting sessions. This is just day one that really go deeper into unlocking the value from data, reimagining reimagining your hybrid operating model, building a private cloud enterprise, and really transforming your enterprise with HPE GreenLake. So I'll hope you'll check them out. As you mentioned, please visit the show, the show floor. We've got lots of partners and lots of experts there showing demos. And then lastly, if you'd like to meet with me, I'll be outside a moment um, for after this and would love to meet you. And then please know, and we'll be walking over to Antonio's keynote in a, in a few minutes. It's starting at the top of the hour. So please join me um, in the big theater as well. And thank you so much for being here today and have a great rest of your Discover. Thank you.